would absolutely agree that we've got a problem in places like the Netherlands. Uh, the situation that they have has not worked out and it's pretty clear to see that Germany is quite rapidly heading that way as well. Uh, the contrast that I would urge people to look into would be the situation in New Zealand and in New South Wales and Australia where there's decriminalization and what that means is that sex workers can work in whatever situation they want. It's a bit more like being a freelancer as opposed to being someone who necessarily must be working in a brothel where there are potential abuses of power. The problems that I have with uh, the Swedish system, um, several parts of that. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar, the, the law in Sweden, this has been for about, is it about 15 years now? Certainly more than 10, possibly up to 15 years. Uh, they've had a law where technically selling sex is decriminalized, but buying it is a criminal act. Um, this is problematic in a lot of ways because whether or not it's the buyer or the seller who is criminalized, uh, it puts the seller into a situation where she must always be, and I'm assuming a woman, but obviously it isn't always a woman, uh, where she must be very uh, concerned about driving away customers. So to give an example, um, if you were on the street soliciting sex work, and this is something that I've heard from sex workers, uh, if you're on the street soliciting sex work and people are coming up in cars and they are afraid that they are the people who are going to be arrested, if you do not immediately get into the car and drive off with this person, they'll assume that you're a cop. And then you've lost that work. But at the same time, you don't get those crucial few minutes to text somebody, you know, here's the license plate of the car that I'm getting into, or to use you know, a bit of screening and a bit of intuition to see whether you feel that this person might be safe. Um, so there's a lot of concern about the extent to which this potentially puts people in unsafe situations. So that's my problem with the law itself. My problem with some of the people who favor this law is that they come into it with a lot of good intentions. So I've had a lot of talks uh, with people both feminists and from religious communities who favor these kinds of laws. Um, and we all agree absolutely that there need to be more services, there needs to be more outreach for people who want to exit any kind of exploitative work, including sex work, that there needs to be better policing of situations where there's any potential, for instance, for trafficking. Um, however, there's also a tendency of these groups to support criminalization, regardless of whether or not the policy is actually allowed for any extra services to exist. And to my mind, that's getting it the wrong way around. We need more services and more support before we have the criminalization laws come in, because otherwise we are potentially taking away people's safety and their means of supporting themselves and leaving them nothing as, as an alternative. 